So today we're going to be doing a bit of work on Mike Zook. So the last time we went out full driving, he ended up breaking the front axle in this. Well, not an axle, the little stubby shaft that goes in the um in the diff here. It's like a mod you can do for these independent front ends in the Zooks. Now I have got the stubby shaft here, which is that one there. It still has the other end of the CV on it. Um, but the whole reason they're like covered in charcoal, because sadly Mike had a big shed fire and I won't go into much detail, but he managed to find the axles and whatnot because they were obviously on the ground. He dug through it like there's all melted stuff over him, but that is the one that we're going to be putting in. Hopefully this stub, stubby shaft, as they call it, hasn't got too hot that it's upset the heat treatment on them. So I will put this all back in for now, but I will suggest to him to buy a new one or get another one made just in case. Like, Otherwise it'll be twice as weak as that one. And this one is actually a 26 blind diff, which he is going to be upgrading down the track. But the same deal with this one, depending on how hot it's gotten, hopefully it hasn't ruined it too much. And the axle, right, you can see it's all been melted. I was gonna try and rebuild this, but I think these aren't standard axles. These are, I found out these are, I thought, I always thought these were Ford Ranger axles, but it turns out they're Ford Courier axles. Well, that's what they're called in Australia. So they still feel all right, but rather than mucking around, trying to clean all the grease and put boots on, you can get a whole new shaft for about 60 bucks. So, And then I'll just clean this one end up, slip the other end of the new uh, CV that we get in there, and uh, he should be right to go then. So, but all right, let's uh, jump in and start pulling that front diff out. So now we've got the bash plate off. These dips are real simple to pull out. There's just three bolts here. Three bolts, that's actually two bolts on that bracket now. And there is the bottom gearbox bolt, which is just one, and then the tail shaft bolt and the whole thing comes out. Obviously I have to pull off the air locker line and the breather line. That's it there. One good thing about IFS is you got shitloads of room. These bolts don't feel good. I don't know if they're slightly cross threaded or not, but.
Well, that's a good sign. The oil's nice and clean. So hopefully the gears are still in good condition. You only had this diff built a trip just before. There is a little bit of sludge on the bottom, but I wouldn't say that's out of the ordinary because they are secondhand gears that have, um, he's had plus it's just been built. Like they might've just bed in a little bit or plus a little bit of metal fragments fragments would have come off that um, stubby shaft. she is so if we look carefully there's the stubby shaft in there and there is a fair bit of metal fragments in there oh it has actually damaged the housing in there you probably won't be able to see but we'll see how good that cleans up so we'll get our aluminium hammer just hit this end off Just like that. It doesn't actually have the um, circlip on the end. Is that going to stop us from pulling that out? Nope. <sighs> All right. All right, the gears look all right. I'll have to give it a good wash with some petrol and then double check it. But the only real issue, wrong side. The only real issue is in this end. It's, 
it's actually damaged the air locker slightly which I'll switch to the other camera and see if we can get a shot. So this is going to be hard to do because I've got to hold the torch, the camera and the screwdriver but and get it all to work. It's just not working. There we go. You can see in here how it's all picked up in there as it's so it hasn't actually just sheared off like when I broke an axle. It's actually like twisted the metal off. So it's sprayed metal and like, oh look at that. But all that will clean up. I'm just going to take all the burrs out and um, give it a good wash out and that should be fine. Like To replace that section there is you're virtually replacing the locker. But I've seen some worse than that. So we'll just get a bit of die grinder in there and clean it up and um, put it all back together. I'll just knock that spline out quickly and... Well, that's not going to be so easy to get out because you can't get through there because of that spider gear pin. I thought I might be able to sneak past it. I might have to make something up to hit that out. get it there we go hopefully I can get something onto that I need something then um, this probably won't go down there any further no I don't want to weld anything to it because or drill anything because it's just more metal we've got to get out I don't think it's there we go unless the circlip on the end is still alright So I've got the die grinder here with a blunt sanding disc because we want to take off as little material as we can. So here we go.
So now our surface is all good. We'll just double see how we've got a slight lip there where we um, hit it with the big chisel. We'll just get the file out and fix that up before we wash it all properly. We had another lump over there, but the rest on up, we got one there too. They must be older marks. There we go. She's all nice and clean now. Oh, that was brake cleaner that I was spraying in. So, all we gotta do now is uh, clean up that diff. Thank you. 
All right, I've been cleaning that for a while now, so it's coming out pretty clean now. So I'll just brake clean it all, blow it out with the air, and I think that'll be fine. That's all done now, so we can. Um, I'll put just a bit of brake cleaner around this edge and clean it up, and then we can put some um, some gasket maker on there and chuck it back in. Spines came up like new. Just clean that little bit off there. Got a bit of wet and dry here. We'll just go over this oil surface here, clean that up. It's got water on it. There is a seal that runs along this, that's why we'll clean up that surface. It's like new now. We've got an oil seal running on this, that's why we can't clean that up on the buff, because it'll uh it'll mark it up quite bad. We'll just put a bit of satin black on here. The rain's starting to come down heavy now. Even though this side will get damaged, we'll just put a bit, bit of paint there so it looks good.
So mucking around with this for a minute, this was quite tight to turn. And actually now that I look at it on camera, that actually doesn't run true. So whenever they've cut and welded this, whoever did it, has put too much heat into it. But anyway, this wasn't turning. It was hard to turn. And cause the actual center has no locating dowels to the housing, like the diff can be like this and you've got to try and feed this axle in, but it won't go in. So I had to back all the bolts off, sort of put this into where it was, um, you could turn it by hand as I am now and then tighten the bolts up. So it doesn't turn like that because that nylon aftermarket bush that he's got in there to support this, it's actually a tight fit. So that's the reason why that's not turning, but it sort of turns. But besides that, at least the broken side's all done. Ideally in a perfect world, you'd want to put that in the lathe and machine this surface flat so it runs true. But for the generally most of the time you're in four wheel drive, this is, you're not going fast, so you won't feel that vibration. So that'll do for now anyway. We'll just put our other axle in. put our fill and drain plugs I did wash all that so we can chuck them back in the top drain plug I won't put Teflon tape on it just yet because we've got to pull it back out to um, fill it up with oil but the bottom one I'll just put a little bit on it is the thicker Teflon it's not ideal but I haven't got any of the thin stuff. All right, it's about ready to put back in the car. Everything sort of, it's hard because that side's hitting the bench, but it all turns smooth now. This banjo fitting on the hose did pop off, so I'll have to undo that and put the hose back on, but that's nothing to worry about. Well, at least it wasn't too damaged. Like, like I said before, he got this done and we only did one trip in it and it broke, so. Down the track he is going to go, I did say it before, I'm pretty sure, the 26 blind centre, but to do that you need a whole new air locker, so probably down the track, hopefully he does that, because then he won't have any more issues breaking, well we hope no more issues breaking that stubby, otherwise he might have to look at getting a chromoly 26 blind um, stubby shaft, or, or even better, do an axle swap, then he'll be in the, up with the big boys, but alright, let's chuck this in the car.